Dear students, welcome. Today we will learn about financial reports in a nutshell. This session is intends to give you an overview over the different types of financial reports and we will also found an own enterprise and see how these different financial reports interact with each other. So we fill the theory with some practice. But first we start with the overview what are the main financial reports of a company. We can distinguish here basically three reports. Of course, the balance sheet, which you might be familiar with, documents assets and capital, assets on the left side and capital on the right side. We will go a little bit deeper into the structure of the balance sheet in a moment. Of course, what we are interested in, if we have an enterprise or if we are an entrepreneur, we want to know how much money do we make, do we generate a profit with our operations. And this is what we calculate within the income statement. The income statement is basically the documentation of revenue and expenses. Revenues on the right side, expenses on the left side. And the difference of both is basically the income or the profit we generate with our enterprise. And then if we have our own enterprise, we might want to take some equity out of the enterprise and this is the third financial report. This is the so-called equity transfer statement that documents deposits if we put money into the enterprise and it also documents withdrawals if we take money out of the enterprise. And we will see this in our example. And I think now it's about time to found our own enterprise. Franz Pfiffig and Pfiffig in German means smart, so he's a smart student. He founds an enterprise and of course he is only founding this enterprise because he successfully participated in our course bookkeeping and management accounting. So he has basically best grades and everything and now he wants to found an enterprise on the base of what he learns. So he has the idea to sell used books which we use for our lecture course um, the book Buchung und Finanzberichte, which we recommend, and uh, from the previous semester, who bought these books, who, who might think that they should not or will not use this book in the future anymore. So his idea is that he can get the book for 10 euros from students from previous semesters and sells the same book for 20 euro per book for the incoming students of the new semester. Um, so this way the students save 10 euros because the uh, sales price of the book is basically 30 euros. So this is kind of a sound business model. It makes sense and everyone who participates makes profits. So now he starts his enterprise and before the new financial year he buys 300 books from students. So 10 euro per book that means he buys them for 3,000. He also has to sell the books, so he buys a small sales booth for 1,500 euro and he expects that he can use the sales booth for five years. He also has some cash which he puts into the company, 500 euro, exchange money and he also wants to hire a student who helps to sell the books and he would get an annual pay of 700 euro. And then he has to cover. This is basically what it means the as assets, which we will see in a moment on the left side of the balance sheet. To cover the investments and the expenses, he invests 3,500 euro from his savings and he also gets a loan from the Sparkasse Aachen of 1,500 euro. And the Sparkasse Aachen requires that he would pay on an annual basis into an interest rate of 6%. So now we have already a lot of information which allows us to create an opening balance sheet. And just about the structure of an opening balance sheet, as I said, on the left side we find the assets, on the right side we find the liabilities. And if we distinguish the assets further, we have long-term assets which we use for multiple periods. Think about the sales booths which we bought and want to use for five years. And then we have the current assets which we usually hold only for a short period of time. Think about the books which we want to sell 
as soon as possible. And on the right side, we have the equity and the liabilities. The equity is basically the, the share of the capital of a company which is owned by the shareholders, or in this case, by the entrepreneur, by Franz Pfiffig. Then we have also liabilities financial for towards, for example, financial institutes. Uh, here we have our loan from the Sparkasse Aachen of 1,500 euro. And we will see that in a moment in a balance sheet. But just so the right side is the origin of capital. Where does the capital come from? And on the left side, we look how do we use our capital for which type of assets. Now let's just put the numbers from our example into the balance sheet. And here we see it. On the left side, we have first the sales booth. This is a long-term asset. We bought this and the purchasing price of the sales booth was 1,500 euro. Then we bought 300 books. This is of course a current asset because we want to sell it as soon as possible, these books. Um, so 10 times 300 is 3,000 euro. Then we have the cash Franz Pfiffig puts into the company of 500. That is the second current asset. And what is important and what we see here, we have a sum of 5,000 euro. And that is important because the balance sheet includes the word balance and we want to balance it. And we will see that this is also true. Because we also learned that Franz Pfiffig puts equity of 3,500 euro into the company and he has a loan, a liability from the Sparkasse Aachen of 1,500 euro, which also adds up to 1,500 euro. Now you can say, oh, this is luck that this is just the same number or it's just accidentally has happened. No, that's not the case. If you ever have a balance sheet where the sum of the left side is different from the sum of the right side, something is wrong. You put either wrong numbers into the system, you booked something wrongly and stuff like that. So that should never happen and that is why it is called a balance sheet. So here it works out and we will see this later on when we go continue with our example. So now we, something happens during the financial year. During the financial year, Franz Pfiffig sells 270 books for 20 euro each. And we can do the calculation that leads to revenues of 20 times 270, 5,400 euro. He also buys another 250 books for 10 euro per book. That means he spends 2,500 for buying books. In September, he thinks it's time for some vacation, so he withdraws 1,200 euro from the enterprise and of course he goes to the Maladive Islands, right? Because there is nothing to do and he really needs a break. So with this information, we can now generate an income statement because now we want to know, do we make money with our enterprise? How profitable is the enterprise? So that leads us to the income statement as a second important financial report. If we look at the income statement, we find expenses on the left side, we find revenues on the right side. And basically the question we want to answer is, has the enterprise become more or less wealthy through its business activities? or what was the impact of the business activities on the firm's equity. Because we will see the profit or the income we generate increases our equity. So now we look at the numbers. And here we see the numbers. First of all, we sold 270 books for 20 euro each. That leads to revenues of 5,400. On the expense side, it's more, right? So we sold 270 books and don't mix it up with how many books I had in stock at the beginning of the financial year or how many books I bought during the financial year. What is really only relevant is 
how many books did I sell in the previous year and we sold 270 and we bought them for 10 euro each that boils down to 2700 euro. So this is one expense. So we only count the expenses for the books we actually sold because the rest of the books they remain in our balance sheet and they still keep their value. Now we have expenses for interest. Remember we have this loan of 1500 euro from the Sparkasse Aachen. We have to pay uh, an interest rate of 6%. 6% times 1500 boils down to 90 euro. So this is another expense. Then we have an expense which is actually not cash relevant because we bought our sales booth for 1500 euro. We can use it and assume a lifetime of five years. 1500 divided by five is 300. So here we have a depreciation for that sales booth of 300 euro. 1500 divided by five. Then we have our student which we have hired and who is still working for us and we pay him or her 700 euro per year. So this is our last expense. And then we have our income and where is the income coming from? Because there was nothing in the numbers we saw in our example. And that is very easy because this is just a difference been between revenues and expenses. Now we have to do the calculation. It is 5,400 euro as a revenues and then we just basically subtract all the expenses 2,700 minus 300 minus 90 minus 700 and if we do the calculation we find out, okay, the difference of revenues and expenses is 1,610 euro. Um, so this is our income. And then we see again, if we had put the income here on the left side, what we have to do, we have a sum of 5,400 on the left side and on the right side the same. And again, this always has to be the case at the end of the year or at each point if we have an income statement, if you want to calculate the income at each point of time. So this is important and if we have higher revenues then uh, the income is on the left side. If the expenses are higher than the revenues we actually generate a negative income or a loss then the income would be on the right side. So what you can also remember is we never have negative numbers in the different financial reports. So let's continue now because now we can also look at the equity transfer statement because we learned that Franz Fiffig went to the Maladives in September of the financial year we consider. So the equity transfer statement is kind of similar, has a left side and a right side and all withdrawals are on the left side and all deposits are on the right side and the question we want to ask has the equity been reduced or increased through transfers between the firm and its shareholder or in our case between the firm and Franz Fiffig. And as we learned he withdrew 1200 euros so there is a withdrawal. He did not put any deposits into the company so this is zero and then the difference is 1200 and you already know the difference is on the right side because here the sum 1200 is higher so the difference has to be here. So again the sums on both sides are the same. And of course a withdrawal or equity transfers change the equity. Here withdrawal reduces the equity, a deposit increases the equity of a company. Now we know both. We know the income and we know the sum of the equity transfers and we can actually calculate the consequence of the equity transfers, revenues and expenses for the equity of the company. So we have an income of 1610, we have withdrawals of 1200 in total, we don't have any deposits, that leads to a positive change 
of equity of 410 euro. And we will see this now in the closing balance sheet. So if we look at the closing balance sheet, of course, we already know the structure. The structure of the closing balance sheet is, of course, the same structure as the opening balance sheet. And now we look at the closing balance sheet and just do some small calculations. So what we see here is long-term assets. And is it a mistake because it used to be 1,500 and now it's 1,200? No, it's not a mistake because we depreciated the sales booth by 300. So this is here directly subtracted. Now let's look at the books because at the beginning of the financial period we had 300 books in stock. We sold 270, so 30 books remain, but we also bought 250 used books and 30 plus 250 is 280 with a value per book of 10 euro each. 10 times 280 is 2800. So now we can do the calculation. 5400 is a positive cash flow minus 2500 minus 90 minus 700 minus 1200 is in total 4400. 90 and if we have uh, 5400 minus 4490 we have 910. This is kind of the cash flows during the financial year. At the beginning of the financial year we had cash, this is the opening balance, plus 500 and that boils down in total to 500 10 euro. So this is exactly the number which you find in the closing balance sheet. If you sum this all up, we have 5,410 and we already know that our equity increased by 410. Um, so this is 3,500. This was the opening balance plus 410 is 3,910. And the liabilities, because we did not repay anything of any uh, part of our loan, it remains at 1,500. And that in total is 5,410. And that is a good thing because the sums on both sides are the same. If there would be a difference, there would be a mistake. So when you have this, you have to recalculate. So this is in a nutshell what you do when we look at financial reports, when you found an enterprise and you even learned how these different financial reports interact. At the end, everything ends up in the balance sheet. Just as a summary, balance sheet, income statement and equity transfer statements are elements of an annual financial report of enterprises. The concepts in this video were a little bit simplified, but they will hold over the entire courses you, when you look at financial accounting and in general, of course, everything what we said is technically true. Thank you for paying attention and I hope this video is beneficial for you. Thank you.